So in this video I'm going to tell you how to build the Hexabot dual drive walking platform. You can uh, use it for any project you want to be able to steer in a walking robot like an Arduino or radio controlled. Or in my case I'm going to use a sonic control. But uh, what we're just going to talk about today is just the assembly of it. So let's get back to the beginning of these assembly pictures here and I'll walk you through it. And we're just about there. Here we are. So you're going to want to start by printing the mainframe. And it prints in the orientation that you're seeing here. And this is a, a pivot frame for the leg. And it prints in that orientation as you're seeing there. Uh, neither one will require supports. And obviously you can tell by the rough finish. I printed them just fast because they're not really going to be seen. They just need to structurally be sound. Uh, I did it in 0 0.02 or 0, 0 0.2 sorry and next we're going to take this brace and glue it onto here so I flipped the part over this is actually the top and I put the brace you want this to pretty much line up with that opening there so it pushes all the way back and down just put some some glue in there and jam it down next thing you're going to want to do is install, in my case, I'm, you may be using a different battery. In my case, I'm just using two uh, AA batteries. So this battery holder is going to fit in here, and the wires are going to tuck down into here. And I have provided a place for the normal slide switch that I use on all my projects. I just found them on eBay. They're about uh, 19 millimeters from hole to hole. Uh, technically speaking, they're a, a double pull, double throw slide switch, but it doesn't matter. I provided a place. You could put any kind of switch you want there. You could put the batteries there. You, you do or don't. In the end, I'll be showing you my project, and it will have that, though. So if you do install the stuff, it will then look like this. Interrupt one of the battery wires. To turn the whole thing off and on. Now we're looking at it from the top. So we have our frame. We've got our pivot plate in place. We've got our two battery wires coming out. Next thing you're going to want to print is all of the leg parts. Now these are links. These are the four outer legs, two on each side. And these are the two inner legs, one on each side. And I'm using uh, rubber O-rings. They snap into grooves on these to provide traction. Uh, the dimensions on those would be about 5 sixteenths of an inch inside and 7 sixteenths of an inch outside. Anyway, they just came out of the uh, Harbor Freight O-ring kit. If you get one of these kits for under 10 bucks, you'll just have every size O-ring you'll ever need for your custom little projects. And there's uh, one of the O-rings snapped right into the bottom of the feet. Uh, we want to prep the motors. Now I know you can buy these small motors on eBay that only have one shaft and nothing on the inside. But I already had a supply of these dual shaft ones from all my other robot projects. So just uh, find the side where the battery contacts are and snip that one shaft off. Or if you have a bandsaw, cut them off. Or hacksaw, hobby saw, whatever. Anyway, cut the shaft off on, on the battery contact side and get those out of the way on both motors. So basically they'll look like that. And then you're going to want to prep them with a couple of short lengths of wire so you can know positive and negative. So that you can control walking forward and backward and left and right. And when we put them in the robot, we'll want... Uh, the positive wires on the bottom and the two negative wires up on the top which is confusing because I'm talking about the part being flipped upside down you'll see in the next picture or pretty soon you'll see anyway this is just another shot of the motors so here they are sitting in the frame the wires are tucked through again you'll see that in just a second when the motors are put in place the the button part that's on the motor has a hole that'll provide it and then just screw them in uh, if you're in America just use a 632 screw actually found that the screws that are used in light switches and AC wall sockets, you know, for holding the wires on, if you've ever replaced one of those, save those screws because they give you a nice big head, they're easy to turn, and they're, they're not too long, and they thread right in. So they're, they make dandy screws for holding these motors and projects. This is the view from the top side where the two motor wires will be coming out. There's a cutout for the part of the band and everything. And here's a, another bottom view of it so you can see how it looks spaced in there. 
Okay, now we're on to the cams that are going to go onto these motors. Since not all of the motors are the, have the same length of uh, shaft on them, we're, we're going to allow for a little leeway up here, you'll see in a minute. So, the cam will fit on, and then you're going to need, I'm using a uh, number two, and you can get them in various lengths, uh, from short to long. I have quite a few, a large selection of these number two self-tapping screws, just just for making these kinds of projects. Just again, buy them off eBay, they're dirt cheap, buy a hundred at a time. You'll have all kinds of uh, possibilities then. But the uh, the shafts have a hollow all the way through, so it, it doesn't really matter how long the screw is. It isn't gonna bump into anything if it's too long. If it's too short, it just won't hold the, the cam on is all. So it's, again, not a problem. And that's just showing the cam being screwed in. The screw will recess into the cam. Oh, and by the way, the cams print as you're seeing them here, no supports. Assuming that you get have good bill plate adhesion, you don't have to do a raft or anything either. I didn't. Okay, so now we're looking at the uh, four outer legs. They're prepped and I've got uh, four screws. These are number three by about 12 millimeters long. They were left over from some uh, motor kits I had in the past. You could use just about anything. They're going to go through this hole and into the frame here. Hold the leg on, but not tight. If you didn't have screws, you could even use a, a flathead finishing nail, for example, and, and shove it through the hole there and shove it through the hole here and glue it from the inside. Again, there's nothing special about it. If you have a screw that's close to fitting but a little tight, well, drill it out a little. The main thing is you want the leg to be able to move and not have too much slop. So however you want to hold it on will be good. So, and you'll notice that the uh, rubber feet part face to the insides, not the outsides. This is the center leg when sitting on that cam. It's the first part of the stack. So once you have your four other legs on, put a center leg on. And the next thing we're going to do is put on the uh, links. There'll be two of them. Stack them. There you go. There they are stacked. The next thing we're going to do is put a screw and a washer in the end here. And in this case, they're uh, number number two self-tapping. It's about three-eighths long, something like that, quarter-inch long. But it's these don't need to be too long because the part they're screwing into comes all the way out um, to the end. So the shorter the better, probably, less chance of breaking anything. And there it is in installed. And if th this one you can screw down all the way tight and these should still remain free. And because these legs are offset at different heights, you should be able to swing one around and the other around and figure out which leg they actually go to, you know, made upright. Then these are a little bit longer. And these are going to go into that pivot piece that we did on this and the center leg. So you have a washer and a fairly long little number two self-tapping screw of some sort, or whatever. Again, it could it could even be a, a, like I said, a, a nail with a flathead because you can shove it through and glue it from the backside. This is what where they were going through because when this leg moves on that is not only going back and forth but up and down. So that needs to be able to move free. And I've left quite a bit of space between this pivot bar and where that is. You don't want to pull it all the way in tight. It'll, the leg will be crooked. It's because, as I was saying earlier, some of these motor shafts are different lengths. You get a motor shaft that's real short, it'll be pulled all the way in. So it, it's a no-brainer. Just make sure everything is as has the least amount of slop as possible, and yet nothing is so tight that it can't freely move. Other than that, it's not critical at all. So this was showing a, a screw being put in here. The same thing, you, you, you know, use a short screw, screw it in. I usually just tighten them all the way up, then back them off, you know, a quarter or a half a turn, whatever it takes to make them feel free. But that's basically it assembled. At this point, you could put any kind of control that you wanted on there. You've got the two motors so you can run them forward, backward, left and right, turn, on a dime, whatever you want, and you got battery power coming up. And I'll, uh, I'm going to be doing a post next on uh, using an Arduino sound sensor and the uh, Helmhertz uh, resonator cabinet to uh, do a tone control on the on the robot to control its walking and, and turning and stuff like that, which you might find interesting. But it'll be a another video, 
and I'm going to post um, all the STL files to 3D print these parts on Thingiverse. That should be down in the comments. Gives you a rough idea how it, how everything should look. Now we're moving on to the Helmhurst part, so we don't want to go there. So anyway, I think that's about it for now.